543 million years ago, during a period known as the Idiacran, our planet would have seemed incomprehensible and alien, even to a hypothetical time traveler. Earth's oceans contained so little oxygen that modern fish would have died quickly. A sticky carpet of microbes covered the sea floor, and on this carpet, a limited variety of organisms proliferated, sluggishly slithering blindly over the mud and grazing on the microbes. Animal life was simple because there were no predators and therefore no need to defend or flee. But an evolutionary storm would soon overturn this tranquil world. Within a few million years, in the Cambrian period, this simple ecosystem would have disappeared, giving way to a world dominated by extremely diversified organisms with ultra-modern anatomical features. Today, the general idea of an animal organism applies to rather consolidated morphological characteristics, such as the presence of a mouth and possibly four, six or eight legs. And even when considering extinct species, the thought still goes to forms that hearken to modern ones, albeit with more bizarre characteristics. In reality, as paleontologists well know, things are very different. If we were to go back in time, we would be confronted with unbelievably strange life forms. There was a distant time, more than half a billion years ago, when life on Earth consisted only of single-celled bacteria, algae, and only a handful of multicellular organisms. All creatures were essentially marine, even though, visibly, the oceans could appear to be completely empty. It would not have been easy to notice, for example, that the ocean floor was actually teeming with amorphous creatures digging in the mud and some transparent little creatures floating in the water that looked like little jellyfish. But there were no predators, no competition, and in short, this environment was decidedly boring. Not that life on land was any more exciting. There is a slight possibility that some anthropods that emerged in the middle of the Cambrian period were able to stay out of the sea for a short time. But in the absence of fossil evidence, this belief is mostly speculation. It is much more likely that the most important form of life on Earth was limited to the growth of the blue-green algae and bacteria on rocks along the coasts. It is in this very unemotional context that the first bilateral creatures suddenly appeared in the oceans, that is, animals with recognizable front and back parts. A definition that, as you may have guessed, now encompasses much of the animal kingdom. The oldest bilateral organism ever found was identified in Australia and was named Acaria warriotia. It was a type of worm about two to seven millimeters long that lived in the transition between the Idiacaran and the Cambrian periods about 560 million years ago. It spent its life digging small tunnels in the sea floor in search of food. It wasn't a complex animal little more than a mouth and an anus connected by a very short digestive tract. Maximum simplicity. However, it is the first known organism with this symmetry, which would have considerable success in the Cambrian and would quickly become dominant. In short, at the beginning of the Cambrian, there was very little movement in the oceans and zero movement on the emerging land, completely devoid of vegetation. Our planet at the time was absolutely flat and apparently devoid of life, or with life in complete dormancy. A planet that had formed four billion years ago, but in all that time had only been able to develop organisms that were struggling to find a secure evolutionary path. What stymied their development? Too little oxygen, too much oxygen, too much carbon dioxide, too cold a climate, too hot a climate. The fact was that epochs had been going on for billions of years, and still, it's fair to say, you couldn't pull a rabbit out of a hat. Just bacteria, plankton, and single-celled algae were some rare, more complex organisms, but nothing more. Was a special climate perhaps necessary to produce more complex life forms? Well, not much is known about the global climate during the Cambrian, but the unusually high levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere about 15 times today's levels, suggests that the average temperature may have exceeded 30 degrees Celsius, twice today's average temperature, even near the poles. There were no polar ice caps, and the oceans were about 200 meters higher than they are today, creating vast oceanic areas at low depths, 
85% of the Earth's surface was covered with water, compared to 70% today, with the continents of Gondwana and Panotia still well separated and located at the equator. However, something drastically changed during the first few million years of the Cambrian. Some more complex animals such as flatworms, segmented worms, and perhaps cnidarians and sponges were just beginning to appear, and multicellular organisms had begun to take on strange and almost nightmarish shapes. So strange that you'd think they were the work of a mad surrealist artist. So strange that these creatures couldn't be classified in any of the categories known up to that point. Beginning 543 million years ago, and continuing for about 10 million years, there was a rapid increase in the diversity of biological species in the ancient oceans of the Earth. This event, known as the Cambrian Explosion, is considered so significant that it is sometimes referred to as the Biological Big Bang. During this explosion, several anatomical innovations appeared for the first time, some of which have been preserved over time and are still found in modern biological systems. For example, the appearance of arthropods with legs and compound eyes, or worms with feathered gills, and true predators capable of chasing prey rather than simply ambushing them. It is difficult to pinpoint the specific factors that led to the explosion, but many researchers believe that the main reason was the increase in atmospheric oxygen levels during this period. Researchers have found that after a significant increase 2.5 billion years ago, atmospheric oxygen concentrations began a gradual decline. About 600 million years ago, the trend changed and the concentration of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere began to rise sharply again, reaching a peak about 500 million years ago, at the height of the Cambrian explosion. The increase in oxygen may have been caused by continental drift, which led to widespread volcanic activity during this period, and earthquakes, which mixed seawater and enriched it with oxygen. In addition, earthquakes and volcanic activity probably created a difficult living environment that favored biological adaptations thus increasing the survival capacity of some organisms. This may have created an ideal environment for the development of marine organisms such as trilobites, brachiopods, corals and other invertebrates. Speaking of trilobites, they are indeed the most famous and widespread animals of the Cambrian, anthropods with hard shells, heads and legs. Today we know more of 20,000 fossil species with a range of morphologies that reflect adaptations to a variety of environments and life strategies. Some had eyes, others were carnivorous predators, and others fed on decaying matter or single-celled algae. They ranged in size from 5 to 50 centimeters. The emergence of the first active predators would later trigger an evolutionary arms race, and the subsequent explosion of a wide variety of anatomical attack and defense structures such as gradually increasing size. So, by the late Cambrian, we had this situation. Still no colonization of land masses, a lot of marine activity, and even large life forms. Any examples? If we want to talk about oddities, the most typical representative of this category could only be the Haulusigania. And the name says it all. It was a kind of cross between a pair of combs and a bow-legged worm. This creature looks as strange today as it must have looked then. Most of the specimens found range in size from 0.5 to 5.5 centimeters. The creature lived about 505 million years ago. Believed to be one of the earliest invertebrates, it is characterized by two paired rows of giant spines, 14 in all, that originated directly from the back and extended outward and upward. Below the body were seven bifid tip tentacles placed in a dislocated position relative to the spines. If, on the other hand, we want to talk about predators, then at the top of the list can only be the Anomalocaris, surely one of the largest predators of its time, whose length could exceed one meter. Its complicated mouth parts represented something unique on a morphological level. The two large spiny appendages were capable of capturing prey, which was then carried to its mouth. This mouth, consisting of a series of circular plates, was always open but acted like a nutcracker. A study has shown that many of the wounds found on the bodies of Cambrian trilobite fossils are perfectly consistent with the predatory mechanism of the Anomalocaris. Needless to say, 
we are talking about an almost disturbing extraterrestrial fauna. But since life always follows death, the Cambrian is unfortunately known for another feature, and that is that it also hosted a mass extinction event that occurred at the end of the period, about 480 million years ago, which would have ended this experimental era, with a relatively small number of organisms surviving, a mass extinction that still has no definitive explanation. At this point, however, I'm almost reluctant to mention that a new research trend denies that this famous Cambrian biological Big Bang actually occurred, and even rules out the equally famous extinction. As for the alleged explosion of life, some researchers believe it is an artifact derived from the lack of fossil preservation in the earlier period, which was populated only by soft organisms, and the mass extinction would have no explanation, simply because it never happened. In fact, numerous discoveries of fossils belonging to Cambrian species in geological strata of the late period the Ordovician, have apparently been reported in recent years. Disappointed? Don't worry, it's just a scientific debate. Theories constantly change. And besides, with paleontology not being a mathematical theorem, the truth may never be known. Lost in the past, comprised of hundreds of millions of years.